So today the plan is simple. We're gonna kill our opponents with their own decks and maybe even their own combos. This deck is the most fun I've had in standard for a while. Hey everyone, Hex here, and today's deck is truly my favourite so far since Wild of Eldraine was released. I'm absolutely loving all the new synergies and ideas coming from Wilds of Eldraine, so if you haven't yet, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. It massively helps out, and as always, I really appreciate all your support for this channel. But onto this deck, and we're looking to steal our opponent's cards and then destroy them with their own combos. So how do we do this? Well, we have plenty of ways. Let's start with the new cards from Wilds of Eldraine. Firstly, Decadent Dragon. It's a 4-drop 4-4 four four with Flying and Trample, and when it attacks, you get a treasure. Essentially, a different take on our old favourite Goldspan Dragon, which dominated Standard for a while. This creature does also have an adventure, though, in a 3-drop Black Instant called Expensive Taste. You get to exile the top two cards of your opponent's library, and you get to play them at any time. So, the dragon attacking should create the treasure needed to cast these cards, if they are off-colour, but because many of our cards look to play our opponent's cards anyway, we've set our mana base to all five colours, so we shouldn't be having a problem. The other new card is a 4-drop Saga in Corvold and the Noble Thief. His first two chapters net you a treasure, but its third chapter lets you exile the top three cards of your opponent's library, and you can play them this turn. The treasure is meant to pay for these spells, but dropping this on turn 4 can potentially get you a turn 5 7 drop from your deck, so it does also have a huge double upside here. And what are these 7 drops? Well, we have Atali, Breach the Multiverse, and Virtue of Persistence. Virtue being a 7 drop enchantment that puts a creature card from any graveyard into play in your upkeep, and its 2 cost sorcery adventure gives a creature minus 3 minus 3 until end of turn and you gain 2 life. Although all these cards allow you to play your opponent's cards, they are all powerhouses in themselves anyway. With so much treasure flowing around and hitting our land drops off our opponent's decks, these cards are really not that hard to cast early on, but are absolutely great at closing out games too. I've got Siphon Insights as a great way to hold up mana, then exile cards at instant speed to play. And I'm trying out Kotose. I've never played this card before, so I want to give it a try. It's a 5 drop creature that when it ETBs, lets you exile a card from opponent's graveyard. You can then look over their deck, their hand, and their graveyard for other copies of those spells and exile them too and as long as you control this creature you get to play one. This is a great combo destroyer but also for graveyard hate and it is a chunky 4-4 creature in itself. I've got Corpse Appraiser and Leer. The Appraiser although a slight nombo with Virtue of Persistence can fix our hands and deal with the specific graveyard threats that can be in standard. Whilst Leer is absolutely outstanding in recasting your sorceries including your adventure cards and I'm super interested in exploring more Leer decks over the next few weeks. The rest of the deck is pretty much to deal with the best of one meta that I've been facing in mono red and mono black decks. I've got cutdowns, go for the throats and edicts, brotherhood's ends and burn down the house for some mass removal. Hopefully though I do get to play against some nice combo decks or some mid-range decks to try and combo them out or you could try this in best of three if you're feeling that too. We got 26 lands with all the colours represented thoroughly and a small sideboard in case we steal any sideboard matters cards. So this deck is great as you never know what you're going to be playing with game by game. So give this a whirl if you want to have a blast like I've had on Arena today. Anyway, if you have any thoughts on this deck or cards I should be playing going forward, you can let me know in the comments below. You can find me over on Twitter. And as always, thank you for watching. All right, on the play, decent enough hands for Lands is pretty nice. A couple of edicts in case we have to deal with any pesky creatures early on. And we can work towards the burn down the house. And there's a decadent dragon, which is a great turn three play for us. Get to have a look at our opponent's, or a look at a small window into our opponent's deck. Uh, however, they play a virus beetle. And I think I'm gonna discard my shoulder's edict here. So we find a go for the throat, okay. So there's a lot of removal in this deck or early removal because the meta I've been facing is quite swayed towards a mono reds decks and I needed to stay alive before we could start chucking down dragons so probably one or two more removal spells than I would like. Opponent with another virus beetle so if they are a discard deck I do like the uh, expensive taste here from our decadent dragon as it is going to refill our hand but also our creatures in exile can't be discarded by our opponents so they're safe over there opponent is on demir it looks like and they attack us with their beetles not much we can do about that 
I'm certainly not going to be using Go for the Throat on one of these beetles. And it is a Duress for our opponent. And they swipe our burn down the house. And there's a Jetmere's Garden. Okay. So one thing I like about this deck is that you never know what you're playing against. You never know what cards you're going to be cast in. And casting Sorin here, I haven't done this for many a month. I think we'll go straight to make a 2-3 because if they do have interaction with either of our permanents here, at least maybe one of them can survive. And uh, if they do want to take out both, that is a bit of a 2 for 1 for us. So I'm fine with that. Yes, cut down and a edict for our opponent there. So they look like they're on a discard deck, but they've got a few Planeswalkers here. So maybe they're on Planeswalker deck and they just so happen to found their virus beetles. Go for the throat on our dragon though. It's going to slow us down a little bit. Can't quite cast this Kaito though, as we do not have a blue mana, which is a bit of a problem for us. Speaking of problems, Liliana is another problem. It's going to make us discard a card and we'll discard this Go for the Throat. As we have two in our hand. And uh, there's Corvold. Now Corvold's nice because that's going to allow us to create a treasure. Which will allow us to cast our Kaito, or their Kaito. Opponent's Kaito here. And like before, I'm just going to go and make a 1-1 straight away. And this will mean that the opponent either needs to minus on their Liliana or they are... We can start poking away at that. Okay, they do minus and make us sacrifice our creature. Rafine's Tower. But our Corvold here is going to next turn allow us to exile three cards of our opponent's deck and play them this or that turn. So you've got to be slightly careful. Obviously, the mana isn't going to be too great if you're playing against decks that are not Grixis colours, as Corvold. You can't always cast the cards off Corvold, but I tried to have a, a widespread mana pool here to cover all eventualities. Opponent with a Virus Beetle. They nab our other go for the throat. Maybe we should have fired that off, but uh, I didn't know they would have another Beetle. I guess Liliana was always going to up there anyway. But they take out their Kaito. So, a Planeswalker down. So, we find our Decadent Dragon. Okay. So, we've got the opponent down, obviously, to one card. They are, in themselves, discarding their own cards. But we've got such a large exile pool here. We did exile three Underground Rivers, though, from the... Uh, well, from our Corvold, which is pretty unlucky. But we get to play our Dragon. We get to make them sacrifice their Liliana here. And uh, has our 4-4 four -four here managed to hold off these virus beetles? Well, no, because Liliana's back to make us surely sacrifice our dragon. Yep, sacrifice our dragon. So dragon down, and these beetles are going to come at us. And we go down to 8. These pesky beetles have done so much work here. So we found Siphon Insight. Well, we'll definitely fire that one off. Oh, and look at that. Path of Peril. Opponent's Path of Peril. They're not going to like us uh, casting this against their own beetles. But what a little draw we got there. Still have to find a way to deal with Liliana. And I think the best thing to do is just cast this dragon. Liliana can only up here. And there's nothing for us to discard. All our cards are in exile. And we can just uh, attack Liliana with our dragon. They didn't actually up it, so they must have a decent card in their hand. We'll fire off Siphon Insight. Hopefully find like a Duress or something. That would be nice. Oh, Liliana. Okay. Okay. Well, Liliana we can play now. Okay, I really want to up it, but I just want to wait a second because I want to just... I'm surely they're going to play this... Um, they're going to activate this Mirex here, which we can cut down, and then we can Liliana next turn. I wouldn't say we're in control, but we've definitely stabilised this board. We just need to start doing some damage, I think. There's Kaito, Dancing Shadow. Okay, so they're definitely a Planeswalker-style deck. 
And they draw a card. Okay, so they're refilling their hands here a little bit. And there's our Decadent Dragon right on cue. So we get to refill our hand. And there's a Sorin and a Dark Lick Shores. Okay, and then with Lily, let's just get them to discard a card. So this deck definitely has some staying power. I guess we're playing the opponent's deck, so it's almost like a mirror match. But we do have the advantage of these dragons and our seven drops, Breach and, and Atali, and Virtue if we need to. I think we will reveal here as it's a corpse appraiser on, corpse appraiser on top. Take three damage, go down to five. But surely we can turn the, uh, turn the tables here. And there's Leer. That's like our one-off in the deck that is... My special finisher, really. Playing Leer gets you to recast your Breach, recast all of your instants and sorceries. Generally, our opponents don't expect to see that. I absolutely love Leer as well with adventure cards. It's something I'm going to explore going forward because you get to cast all your adventure instants for free and then the card goes back into your exile zone to play as a creature. So, really nice synergies there with the dragons. But yeah, we're just going to create a 2 free. Make them discard one of their cards. Attack them for seven. And uh, I guess we'll just play the other dragon here. We've got the treasurer to cast the exquisite, um, expensive blood, expensive taste, sorry, at the end of our turn, if we want to, if they wipe the board or anything. Oh, opponent GG's us. And that's our deck. All right, on the play, I snap kept this hand because we have four decadent dragons in our opening hand. I couldn't ask for a better hand, I don't think. And there's an insight as well. So this is fantastic, especially as we have the untapped mana that we need to cast insight here and then into our expensive taste from the dragons. So what a fantastic start here. Hopefully this will give us another window into what the opponent's playing. There's a Stomper and a Traxxer, so surely a ramp deck. Now, I could take the Stomper to help us ramp, but we have so many decadent dragons here that we might be able to find our lands anyway, and I can't turn down a Traxxer. So we'll, we'll cast our expensive taste here. We find a Stomper and a Beside You. Okay, so that is fine by me. Now, be aware you can not cast the Stomper um, without the green mana if you cast it off of the dragon. Siphon Insight is slightly different. You can use any mana to cast that spell. But we'll take their planes. Just want to hit our land drops. And if I have not hit my land drop and we can take a land from our opponent, I'll definitely do that. And they cycle their herd migration. Gain three life. So hopefully we can work towards our own attractor. Not sure if there's much hits in our deck, but we have a, a sort of a variety of cards that we could look for when we do cast the Traxxer. But one of the good things is obviously that isn't a Traxxer our opponent can't cast, so... We'll just be aware of what they're doing. Obviously they're approaching the 7 mana here. We have our Edict if we need to. We'll say go. And they do find a 7th mana, but it is tapped. 3 blind mice. Okay. All right, so presumably then they're on a three blind mice combo deck. Not 100% sure they are yet, but if you haven't seen it, you basically just make a token copy of the enchantment three blind mice, and then when your next copy of three blind mice triggers, you get to create a token of a, a copy of a token that of a card that you have, if I'm saying that right, and um, you can just basically go infinite with mice. I've seen the deck on YouTube. I have not seen it in real life. So I think one, f one thing we can do is either try and disrupt their combo to win or combo them back. That's going to be quite hard, though, because we'll need a two copies of three blind mice. And I guess we won't be able to get them into, the grave into our own graveyard. So we'll see how this pans out. Anyway, there's a track cert for our opponent. And Free Blind Mice, Mirex, and that looks like Tamiyo, so they're definitely on the combo here. So let's try and disrupt it as best we can. And we can do that by exiling their sagas. 
But we'll get rid of their attractor so whilst we have the opportunity. Play our land for the turn. And I guess we'll go for Corvald here. Create a treasure over the next two turns, and then we get to play their top three cards to end of turn when it um, goes to its third chapter. Courier's Briefcase. So yeah, I'm just going to probably Leyline Bind their three blind mice saga, the one that's about to go to its fourth chapter. I don't want it to get to the graveyard. So I think... Yeah, Tamio creates a copy of a target permanent from your graveyard. So as long as it's not in the graveyard, we should be okay there. And end of turn, let's cast Expensive Taste. And uh, grab some more of our opponent's cards. That's what we're here to do. And a couple of lands. Okay, we're not going to turn my nose up at those. So I guess... I'm just going to go for the binding now. If they have another binding to bind this one, then at least their saga just um, goes back to chapter one. And we'll cast our dragon here. We'll start trying to pressure their life total a little bit. And uh, Stomper to get some more lands. Just playing the basic lands of Swamp, Mountain and one island in this deck. Maybe going forward I might add a couple of the other colours as well. Just in case we pick up cards like the Invasion of Zendikar or a Topri Stomper. But our um, Triumphs here are doing just fine. So really interesting deck or a really interesting game here. I really wanted to combo them out with their own combo. I just don't think I can do that. But um, a Traxxer in our hand, their Traxxer, is a way that we can just win with damage. So that's the plan. And three by mice triggers, and it creates a copy of their mouse. So opponent with a Sunfall. Okay. So Sunfall is a little bit annoying for us there. But it does blow up their tokens. Their free blind mice, I guess, can um, copy their 5-5, five, five, though. We found a Kami War. Okay. I mean, we'll just cast this Kami War, won't we? This exiles a, another one of their enchantments. Keeps them off their combo. Slows them down a bit. And then next turn, we've got um, a track. I probably will play a track the next turn. And we'll follow up with the Kami with um, one of our dragons here. Uh, but opponent scoops it up anyway. They didn't like that. Alright, on the draw. I mean, this would be a nice hand, but I can't have two Atalis. If opponent is on an aggressive deck, we are donezo. This one's much better. There's a toss-up between bottoming the Virtue of Persistence or the Decadent Dragon here. I think we'll go for the Dragon. Again, if they've got... An aggressive start, maybe the virtual persistence can sort of bail us out. And they lead off with a Rafine's Tower, and we'll play our Zeotora's Proving Ground. So until I know what they're doing, I'm going to sort of not make any rash plays. They play a tapped Ors of Land, so I wonder if they're just a control deck. And if they are a control deck, seeing as we're taking their cards from them. This one could be a grind, especially if they aren't playing any win conditions. We do have our own though with our dragons and our Atali. But let's see what goes on here. So no spells played so far. Opponent is playing land and saying go. And we'll do the same. I'm not going to play into open mana like this unless I feel I need to. And uh, they just passed the term. Oh, no. Siphon Insight. All right. Okay, so <laughs> Siphon Insight. We've obviously got Siphon Insights. Wouldn't it be weird if we were playing against a the same deck and we were just both playing each other's cards? And each other's cards are each other's cards. So that would be weird. Um, we're going to play uh, the Mirex from our 
expensive taste. And let's just drop this Corpse Appraiser now. Put a tiny bit of pressure on the board, especially as they've tapped their blue mana. So, 3-3 three, three on the board here. And opponent with a, another Siphon Insight. Apologies if you hear any aeroplanes in the background. I live next to an airport and there seems to be some kind of weird flying show going on. Uh, very distracting. But um, opponent is allowing us to attack with our appraiser here. And they go down to 17. And we will just pass our turn. So this one does look like it's going to be a grindy game. Opponent Field of Ruins us, which is nice because that's going to actually... Give us the blue mana we need to finally start casting our insights. The memory deluge we have in exile here is probably not something I want to cast because I'm pretty sure it goes to their graveyard. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. And that's something I definitely don't want to be doing. Opponent does dissipate though. Okay, so we lose our siphon insight completely. We do find a Kotose. Hmm... We'll attack first though, and I am going to just um, play this card. Yeah, and that goes through quite easily. So we get to exile a card from their graveyard. Um, I do want the land, so it'll be Mirex. And then we get to look at their hand here. And yeah, just straight up control. That's what I expected. Uh, they have another Mirex token or Mirex land in their library, which we'll take. I won't go through their whole deck. It will be a Esper control deck that we um, are fully aware of, played against it many times, but uh, we did get to cast the land from Exile for, uh, from Katose. Opponent with the end on our creature there. Well, they're not going to find another copy in our deck, but they do get to have a good look at our hand, and they're going to see that breach the multiverse, and they're going to probably want to counter that. So. I do want to fire that off as quick as possible, as soon as they didn't have a counter spell in their hand. But unfortunately, we didn't find a untapped mana there. That would have been great to cast. And uh, we'll just attack our opponent with the Corpse Appraiser. And I guess we do want to try and find our land drop, so we'll cast our own Siphon Insight. And it is a Revelry and a Rafine's Tower well. Rafine's Tower is definitely something I want to cast, and I think we'll just go to end our turn here. So our game plan, I think, is going to be to grind them out of cards. We're going to have to start dropping some of our creatures soon to get the farewell out of their hand. Opponent Memory Day loses here to refuel. And then we'll just try and win the late game with our Atali's or our Breach the Multiverse. We did find a Horn Lock Weld, which is one of my favourite cards actually in blue. It is probably one of their win conditions, so I'm definitely going to want to be casting that soon. It is a 6-6 with Ward 2, so it's a pretty difficult card for our opponent to deal with. We'll go to end our turn now though. I definitely want to try and get some more value from the Siphon Insight when we can. Opponent with a Wandering Emperor. Okay, and yeah, they go to exile our creature. I'm going to cast the Siphon Insight, see what we can find. So mate disappear. It's a bit annoying. I maybe should have Siphon Insighted in response to the Wandering Emperor, because then we could have just make disappeared that. So, definitely an error here, but this is a tough game, I think, to play. There's a lot going on, I'm just trying to find a window to cast our spells, but yeah, should have definitely cast the Siphon Insight in response to the Wandering Emperor. But I do quite like having the mate disappear there. It's a... Uh, it might save us later on. But we'll cast our 4-4 here as a Flying Trampler. Haven't got to attack with anything yet. And opponent does have Farewell in their hand. And that's why I'm trying to cheese it out of them a little bit. I do want them to cast that card. There's a Deluge for our opponent. wonder what they're looking for. Another Field of Ruin there. So I guess they're going to... Yep. They're going to shoot their Mirex 
land that is theirs because I'm able not to play Mirex in my deck. But we get to find a mountain or a swamp here. I'm going to go for a swamp. Swamp enables our breach the multiverse and the cut downs all on the same turn. We might even be able to breach twice if we get to that point. And there is one copy of Leer in my deck. So one of the cool things is we can cast Leer later on to uh, get more value, which is one of the reasons I want them to cast this farewell sort of sooner rather than later. Because no doubt they're going to take out our graveyard. And it's going to go for the face of the opponent here. Ignore the Wandering Emperor. Knockout blow, okay. Deals four damage to target attacking or blocking creature. And two less if it targets a red creature. So presumably they bought that in there for the mono red decks. Pretty nice addition actually. And it's a pretty nice way to deal with our um, dragons. But we will play our Corpse Appraiser here. Obviously Corpse Appraiser, slight nombo with Virtue of Persistence. But I don't think we're going to be getting to that Virtue anyway, anytime soon. That's more like playing the opponent's creatures from there grave and the opponent doesn't look like they're playing any creatures using the wandering emperor and i guess that whale is a creature but that's their win conditions here which is why i'm com quite comfortable with where we are because i think we're going to win the long game if we can just they're on 27 cards to breach the multiverse is going to mill basically mill them to uh, death especially as we've got Lear in our hand now and Lear can recast a copy of breach or both copies of breach I think I'm going to Siphon Insight now, and then I'm really going to want to try and um, get a couple of creatures on the battlefield to try and get this Farewell played. Opponent with a Make Disappear on our Siphon Insight. Yeah, but they are down to, what, like 25 cards or so, so I think We'll just attack uh, the Wandering Emperor here. This is a tough game. Trying to find a window to cast our spells is uh, pretty hard against sort of hard control decks. But I don't mind where we are. Put it with a Memory Deluge in our end step. So I'm not casting a spell this turn because I'm going to want to try and drop this Whale when we have an opportunity. And uh, another Siphon Insight for our opponent. I've lost count of how many times that card's been cast in this game. Probably about 10, 12 times. And what are they going to follow up with? It's Siphon Insight again. So it's hard to know whose cards who is at the moment, whose lands are whose. Especially as we are playing other steel effects. And they, that's definitely our card, the Corvold. I am going to make disappear this. And we're just going to tempt them. See if they want this card. We will play it with um, Casualty. And I, let's see if they can, if they want to pay the four mana for this. If they do, that taps them out. And then we can, or well, almost taps them out. And I think we'll probably be okay with casting Breach the Multiverse. So I guess, fingers crossed, they do pay for it, but I don't really want them to have Corvold on the battlefield anyway. I certainly don't want to see an Atali. Um, they don't pay. So that suggests to me that they probably got a counter spell in their hand, they just want to use it for something else. They might also think that we have a counter spell, as we were happy to do that. But let's drop this whale. If they want to counter this, so be it. And they don't. That is a 6-6 six, six on the battlefield. Let's go for Breach now, though. Let's see what's going on. With our Leer in our hand... Okay, it is Negate, yeah. So we knew that they had a counter spell. I wasn't sure it was Negate as such. Okay, they also had Void Ren, which is the perfect answer for our Whale. As the Whale's ward is nullified by the Void Rend. And there is Burn Down the House. Our Burn Down the House. I think we're going to try and turn the screw a little bit. Try and play multiple spells on our turn. Try and get some stuff to stick. We'll play Burn Down the House here and try and blow up this board. And then we can, uh, we've can. we got some big hitters in our hand. Why don't we dissipate? 
I guess we'll just play our virtual persistence here, the Lockvein Scorn on one of these 1-1s. One Gain a couple of life, then it pings us. But yeah, getting that in an exile zone is nice. We get to play that if we need to. Opponent with Wandering Emperor. They are down to two cards. One of them being Farewell. Still. And they do attack us here. So we're going to have to use this Sunfall. I think it's the only way to make sure that we don't die. That just went through absolutely fine. No stick at all. So I don't think they've got a counter spell in their hand. Is this the window or the opportunity we need to close out this game? There's Farewell. Okay. So that deals with that problem. Now, I think I'm going to play Breach the Multiverse here. There we go. We're going to jam this. That's resolved. We'll grab their Wandering Emperor and Atali. As you see, we did have Nashi there. That was originally in the deck. Um, I had to take it out to put some more removal spells because we were just, I was just getting absolutely swamped by um, ag aggro decks. But it's cool. I like the card. It does have a sweet synergy actually with the Decadent Dragon as you get to Ninjutsu the Dragon back to your hand and recast its adventure side. So I do like the card. It's just it's just not right in this meta, but it's definitely something I'm going to explore going forward. The Ninjutsu and Adventures. But anyway, Atali on the battlefield. Nashi, Wandering Emperor. This is looking good with a memory deluge and we can just get them to sacrifice their planeswalker and what i am looking to do is cast leer to make the final finishing blow to their deck by milling them out with that other breach that's in their hand obviously this memory deluge they just cast is slightly annoying if they've managed to find a counter spell which they didn't have they are up to five cards again and there's some for okay Okay, um, I'm not going to go for it next turn just because they've still got a, a grip full of hand of cards and using the Deluge, they're bound to have found a copy of a Make Disappear. But they don't know we've got Leer. They don't know that's happening. And, well, that, they might know we have Leer in the deck because they got to look at our deck earlier using the, the end, but they would have only seen two copies of Breach. And we have cast them both. So let's cast this dragon this turn. That went through pretty smoothly. There's the Wandering Emperor for our opponent. And we are going to edict that whilst we have an opportunity. So I think this game's coming to an end now, one way or another. They're down to their last few cards. couple of tokens on the board for them. Virtual Persistence onto our Dragon. That's fine. And another one. Okay, they do gain four life. They actually managed to cast that Virtue, but surely they're out of... They're out of things to do here. Let's jam this Leer. And it resolves. Let's jam this Breach. And that resolves too. And that is the win. What a grind.